For this video we're going to learn how to use a 68000 microprocessor uh, in a simple computer. Now um, I've seen a lot of these already before, I've looked a lot online and on the various YouTube offerings and there's some really good ideas out there, people have already built one a computer using one of these, um, but one thing I've noticed is they all seem to assume that you have a lot of knowledge or you have facilities for and they never bother about mentioning the you know how to program uh, problems and things or what sort of assembler you're going to use so really if anybody remembers our original z80 based one um, computer that is this was the one which we built if you remember it it's on our uh, we have several videos on this showing how we started from scratch and we're going to do exactly the same thing um, with the 68000. Now um, the Z80 obviously I wanted showing things like the HD, D2, D2A and then we have the displays and things but what we're going to do with this is we're going to stop at a much earlier level than here and actually show how to make it work because um, even looking at the size we have 64 pins as opposed to 40. Um, th this is the package we'll be using um, and there is actually a socket for it you will need a socket i think anybody who tries to solder that straight in well i personally wouldn't advise it um so comparing it with with the z80 um this is basically a, a 16-bit microprocessor i mean they say 32-bit but it's uh, if we talk if we talk in terms of data lines it actually has 16 data lines um so there are a lot more things if you fancy doing some really um interesting 16-bit work then go for one of these the only thing to be fair is they are Oh, should I say making one of these is much more complicated than Z80. Um, why? Well apart from the fact that there's far more of everything you're going to need two ROMs and two RAMs. Here you can see a homebrew example of 68000 in a board and you'll notice above it we have two 2K electrically erasable ROMs and two RAMs which are 2K each. This was, as I think you've seen, if, if anybody's looked at my floppy disk operating system uh, video, you'll find that this actually is the 68000 floppy disk operating system that we don't actually show working. But here, as I say, you can actually see the complexity of it. With that said, there's a lot of complexity on this board that we won't be going into when we make this one. Um, for example, the, the keyboard here is using these ICs along the bottom so we won't need those and likewise there's the floppy disk controller itself and its associated circuitry and the extra crystal etc etc um, the second crystal here being for the ACIA the serial communications port um, there's still a lot of parts you actually need for the 68000 that you don't need for a Z80 um, these ones for example are the for the halt and reset circuit. Now a reset circuit is simply a push button obviously with uh, a bit of debouncing um, with the Z80 but you actually need to combine it with the halt instruction um, and combine the two lines together to actually make it properly uh, work with the 68000. So the little complexities like that. Probably the most complex area if we ignore the doubling up of the EEPROMs and the, the RAM is in the programming side and this is what I, I consider to be a really uh, more difficult part of it and I've written out this little sheet of paper here to try and make the point um, if you look at that we can see what what we're talking about the trouble is with the two EEPROMs each one has obviously its, its address as, a, as an EEPROM but then in terms of the 16-bit device here you have a high address and a low address which means that in the high address location zero the, that's the actual address in the problem itself but the low address it's, it's number one and likewise number two you have the address is number two and three for the low four five six seven so you can see you really need to generate a list of um, prom locations and the higher and low addresses beside it before you even think about doing your programming because obviously then you then have to do, put your instructions in both of these and work on it from there certainly for 
constructing the 68000 if you're considering making a computer with one uh, the thing you really need is a net list um, we did that with the Z80 which I find easier to follow that way but once again um, we're doing a 68000 net list this is the one I hope to be using this is just showing the address lines at the top the data lines are down here um, note we start with A1 there's no A0 because that's in the computer it's at the CPU itself is actually the, the, the a, a naught line but anyway all the same we tied this in as if it was a naught anyway to the proms and the RAM um, you can see uh, over here we have the RAM over here we have the the two EEPROMs you notice that they are they are the same so basically we're, we're connecting all the address lines up exactly the same as you would with a, an 8-bit processor um, then there's obviously other connections to the 138 decoders um, down here we have the address lines connected to the 138 for the memory um, there are more than 17 address lines on a 68000 but we're not talking about those for the moment um, for this circuit to make the thing work um, that's otherwise that's pretty much the same as you'd find with a, an 8-bit processor like we did with the Z80 uh, certainly you need to work at one of those because if you're wiring up all these pins that they're, they're, they're twice as many um, <coughs> memory chips to wire up to wire up as they were with the Z80 so you really need something like this to be going on with. Here is the programming sheet. Uh, I believe this was done on a dot matrix it looks like. Looking at it closely. Uh, it's not very clear, it might not be very easy to see on the screen, but this is actually for the 68000 disk uh, diagnostics machine that I showed you a short while ago. And from here you can see that this has been done with the uh, actual PROM address, the high address and the low address and you can see how it is it it goes backwards and forwards and these are the op codes put in here and the op code obviously is in, in two parts so that's 0400 and that actually is re this is a reset for the program counter so when it the program runs through and decides it's going to jump to the program it will go to 0400 not 00 O4 as it would be with a Z80. Unfortunately for anybody trying to uh, program a 68000 on their own they'll find that there isn't actually any official list of uh, opcodes as such. This is the Hitachi version you'll see that it's broken down and they opcode bits and then they show you have to add the pieces you want depending on what sort of instruction it is and the position etc. Um, and this is actually makes it very very difficult to do unless you're using an assembler so probably most people will choose to use an assembler to generate their opcodes which they then put in the reproms um, I personally uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that I'm going to do it the hard way as I always do you can see this is actually showing the this is from the Hitachi book again how the the uh, whole of the opcode is we worked out for the 16 bits you have four noughts then you have the three three separate bits for the register there's a one then the type of instruction it is and the effective address for these so you can see by the time you've worked out whether or not it's a byte a word or a long word uh, and the instruction itself that's why there are so many variations it's it's pretty pretty difficult to do i think to be honest lastly if i haven't put you off the idea of making a 68000 based computer um we're going to start here this will be the blank board which is very similar to uh, the one which we use for the Z80 and we need a 68 pin socket 68 64 pin socket um, then obviously two for the RAM and two for the ROM I'm going to use 8k ones whereas the disk processor thing uh, I showed you had 2k ROMs and RAMs this one's going to use 8k um, so there you go somehow we don't have very much room on here so what I should probably do is I'm going to end up putting up the the reset uh, and uh, what's the halt circuitry and the oscillator on the back of the board which because there's a bit of wasted space underneath here then that gives more room to put some stuff on here I reckon we can make the whole thing on there um, this is a header strip which we can use with something like this um, standard uh, IC connectors um, and I'll put that on the bottom so we can join it onto another board to expand it um, 
So that, that's really where we're starting. So uh, using what, the way I'll do it is the way I've done it before. Once again, here's the Z80 version. It's all done with these little wiring combs. And I shall use the same things here, these little fellas, and a wiring pen. And we'll wire it up on the back. But what I'm going to do is I'll do the first part, have it working an absolute minimum amount that you can make it work and check that it's it's working okay. And then we'll move forward. And depending on how much interest there is in this, um, I'm quite happy to add more bits and pieces. Ultimately, I have a nice 16-bit analog to digital, which I would really like to do some experiments with.